What is going on, Phantom Army? It's your boy Phantom Stilts, and welcome back once again to a brand new Streamlabs OBS tutorial video. Today we're taking a look. We did our YouTube settings for streaming, and now we're going to do our YouTube settings for recording. So if you guys ever see a video on my channel that looks really, really clear and really, really high definition, this is the settings that I actually use uh, day to day. So if I'm ever recording a tutorial video, a unboxing, a review, gameplay walkthrough, uh, something from my stream, this is how I capture it in the recording. And I'm gonna show you guys the settings right now. Uh, without any further ado, make sure to like and subscribe. You guys are brand new to the channel. Uh, we're just over 700 subscribers on the YouTube. We're trying to get to that 800 subscriber mark, 900 subscriber mark, and obviously that magical 1000 to get monetized and partnered on YouTube. So I'd really appreciate if you guys would join the channel. Uh, without any further ado, like I said, we're gonna get right into the tutorial. It shouldn't take too long, so stick with me. Here we go, guys. All right, guys, so here we are in Streamlabs OBS. The recording settings are actually very, very simple. Uh, depending on your system, you might not be able to use these settings that I use, so make sure you check your hardware and your software. Uh, make sure that your computer is actually able to handle the bit rate and everything I'm going to explain to you in the video. Without any further ado, let's get right into the tutorial, guys. So what we're gonna do here is we already have our scenes set up. I'm assuming uh, with this tutorial that you guys have already learned how to set up a scene. Um, basically all of the stuff that I have in my OBS studio or actually Streamlabs OBS, excuse me, not OBS studio is already set up. Uh, so we're actually going to record uh, a high definition video with the settings that I'm going to show you guys. So we're going to start by going down here to this little settings cog, which is right here in the left hand corner. So if I can get my taskbar out of the way, so we're going to go ahead and go to settings here and we're going to go to the output tab. So the output tab is basically. Um, everything you're doing, whether it's streaming, recording audio or replay buffering. Now, the one we're going to focus on today is obviously the, uh, recording tab. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this over to the right side of the screen. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. So the recording settings, you obviously want to set your recording settings to advanced mode. So we'll go to the recording settings tab here. So now that we're on the recording settings tab, these are the settings that I use for my recordings. Like I said, whether I'm doing a walkthrough, uh, for a video game. Uh, recording a tutorial like this, recording a reaction video, anything I do, these are the settings that I use. So the first thing we're gonna look at is type. So you want it to be a standard type. You don't want it to be anything other than that. Standard will work perfect for you. That way it just keeps it all uh, relatively simple. Um, like I said, the recording settings are very easy to do. Uh, they're actually a lot more lenient, a lot more uh, tweakable than streaming settings because with streaming settings, I don't know if you guys know, there is a 9,000 megabit per second stream upload uh, cap that YouTube does. And I believe that Twitch is still 6,000 for uh, non-affiliates and non-partners. Now, um, if you are partnered on YouTube, that obviously escalates to a certain number. And then on Twitch, I believe the cap is 8,000 for partners and, um, and affiliates that have, that have uh, first come first serve uh, transcoding on their Twitch channel. So like I said, recording is a lot more lenient than streaming. So we're going to keep our standard at type. Then you're going to choose recording path. Your recording path is where the video is going to go. Once you're done recording, as you guys can see it, I have it on my C drive under users and phantom and videos. So that's where the recording for this video is going to go. Uh, so make sure you take note of that recording path because you will never be able to find your video. Uh, also, something I would recommend doing is that if you set it up to like a personalized folder, such as like um, I have something on my desktop that says uh, ready for YouTube videos. So usually I send it there, but we're, we're recording, obviously. So all of these settings are now locked until I finish the recording. So make sure you set a recording path to where you know the video is going to be, and then you'll be all set with the recording path. Next thing we're going to do uh is we're going to look and see the generate file name without space uh so it's going to basically when it saves the video it's going to save it as a bunch of numbers basically it's going to be the recording time of which you recorded it and also uh the date you recorded the file so i like that uh lets me keep stuff uh sort of organized of when i recorded it and also uh the date i recorded it so it's very very cool you want to set your recording file to MP4. That's going to give you the the best quality video uh, that you could possibly get. It stands for MPEG4. Um, so you're going to set that to MP4. That way, it's the highest quality video you could possibly have through this recording software. So the next thing we're going to do is that if you have a dedicated graphics card, I want to stress this. If you have a dedicated graphics card in your PC and it's an NVIDIA card, please use hardware NVENC new. 
because it has a special chip on it that's going to basically, un uh, recording a video with a dedicated graphics card, here I'll just say this for sake of argument, recording a video is a lot less intensive on your graphics card than a stream. The only thing the graphics card has to do is record the audio and visual feed that's coming through. Now streaming is very different. It's trying to encode basically as you're playing the game. So it's trying to basically do two things at once, unless you have a second dedicated graphics card. It's trying to both record and then send it off over the internet, over your ethernet uh, to capture the image and send it to whatever platform you're using, whether it be Twitch or YouTube or what have you. So that's what you wanna send it to if you have a dedicated graphics card, that's the setting that I use. Now, if you have an integrated graphics chip, I would recommend using X264 because that uses your CPU to, to not encode the video, to record the video. So, if you have a lower budget PC and not a dedicated graphics card, I would definitely, definitely, definitely use X264. It's gonna give you the best quality image that you possibly can get. Now I have a 1660 Ti in my, uh, in my PC, my gaming PC. So that's what I usually use to record because it gives me the best possible picture. So if you have a low budget PC, use X264. If you have a dedicated graphics card, especially in Nvidia, use NVENC new. And I think AMD, I can't remember what the encoder is, uh, is called, but it's a different, it's gonna be a different option than NVIDIA or X264. You're gonna see one specifically for AMD. Anyways, so we'll do the custom uh, Muxer settings. That's gonna be zero. Uh, you're going to then go to the rate control. The rate control is actually uh, how much bit rate is going through at one time. So you wanna keep that constant, especially when you're recording, because like I said, Streaming and recording are very different. Streaming is much heavier of a load on your GPU and CPU and basically anything to do with your computer settings uh, than recording. Recording is just a localized video feed. So anyways, you're gonna set that to CBR, that stands for constant bit rate. Now, like, again, if you have a lower end PC and you're trying to record videos for YouTube or Twitch, you could possibly use VBR. I wouldn't use anything else than those two options. Uh, CBR obviously stands for constant bit rate, whereas VBR stands for variable bit rate. So variable bit rate basically means that based on what's going on on screen, your computer is going to try to keep uh, a good enough bit rate so the, the video is clear enough, but it will fluctuate based on what's going on in your PC. Now constant bit rate, the difference between VBR and constant bit rate is constant bit rate is going to be uh, the bit rate is going to try to stay at, as you guys can see, I have 30,000. That is very, very high. Like I told you, there's caps for streaming. There is no cap for recording, whether you're recording to YouTube or Twitch, does not matter. As long as your computer can handle it, you can set that bit rate as high as you possibly can. And that's what I would do because you want the clearest video and audio possible. So keyframe intervals, uh, if you're dealing with keyframe intervals, basically what it does is it's how much of the frame is being sent. Uh, so if you have a keyframe interval at zero, uh, you don't really have to worry about it with recording. Now, streaming is a little bit different. Uh, streaming, when you're using a keyframe interval, it's the entire frame is set instead of just differences of the frame. Um, so having a keyframe keyframe interval as two means that it takes at most two seconds for the video to catch up to where the viewer wants to see. They don't have to worry about that with recording because I told you the recording is just a localized recording over your PC. Streaming is a little bit different where you want real time action. So that's where the keyframe interval comes to uh, fruition in streaming. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is set your preset obviously to high or excuse me, quality. And then your profile is gonna be either main or high. Uh, I would recommend setting it to high. You would want to set it to main. That could also be if you have a lower end PC, set it to main. If you have a higher end PC with a dedicated graphics chip like I do, set it to high. And then last but not least, we're going to set our max B frames to two. So pretty much guys, that is how you set up a high definition, really, really crisp looking recording uh, for your YouTube or Twitch uh, videos. So I hope this helps you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. Like I said, if you guys are brand new to the channel, I would really appreciate that. We're right at 700 subscribers, just a little bit over 700 subscribers. And we're obviously trying to get to that 800, 900 benchmark, as well as that magical 1000 where we get monetized. So I hope this helped you. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, like I said. But without any further ado, this is your boy Phantom Stilts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it again. And as always, I will see you guys on the next video. Take care, guys.